Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Today we're going to be doing our unboxing and review of the Starfinder Beginner Box. Uh, so this is a brand new product by Paizo Publishing. It's sort of geared towards uh, people getting into RPGs for the first time, uh, people getting to Starfinder for the first time, but I think overall there's going to be a little bit of something for everyone uh, in this set. Um, so this again, like sort of the starter set kind of idea for the Starfinder role-playing game. Uh, so we're going to again just look at everything that's inside the box itself. Um, this is actually my second attempt at doing uh, the unboxing portion. The first time I got a little caught up uh, in the moment and wasn't really paying attention to like the camera at all. So uh, we're going to look at everything that's inside of here and uh, do our review. So the first thing, we just got some really nice looking art on the front here. Characters fighting a sort of robotic dragon which is just awesome. Uh, and then we got some character art on the top and bottom of the box there. And then on the sides we just have the robotic dragon there again. Then on the back, whoop. so on the back we have just a little marketing blurb. So if you want to read that you can. A uh, picture showing all the contents. And then we have the breakdown of what's in here. So there's a 96 page player's uh, or hero's handbook, which is really cool, uh, which actually goes over character creation, uh, which I think is a nice uh, thing to have in here as well. And it includes a solo adventure, which I was uh, really pleasantly surprised to see once I noticed that on the back there. Uh, 96 page game master's guide, complete set of uh, seven dice. So you got your percentile dice uh, in there as well, uh, which is cool. Uh, more than 80 full color pawns, uh, including 24 bases to use with those, six pre-generated characters, and six blank character sheets. So you can have one, or you can do one or the other. You can use a pre-made character, you can make your own, uh, which is really, really, uh, just again, a, a nice thing to have when it comes to these starter sets. Uh, six player aids, um, so double-sided uh, cardstock, uh, age things that just sort of give you some information. Um, like what you can do on your turn, stuff like that. We'll show that off in a second. And a durable, reusable, double-sided flip mat that works with any kind of marker. So this works with dry erase, wet erase, or permanent, if you use like the dry erase method to uh, to get the permanent marker off there. Uh, so that was something that, again, really took me by surprise. I was expecting just a paper mat, um, map, like fold-up map to use, and I would have been totally okay with that. But this is actually like the same kind of thing that you can buy in the other flip map products so that's um, you know that's a 15 to 20 dollar value uh, already just in of itself uh, the overall price is also 39.99 and we have like the little board game information here which is kind of an unusual thing to have on these i don't know i've, I've never noticed some on other things before but it gives you a number of players your age range and it says that the play time is 60 minutes although um I mean, it, it could be, I guess. I, I don't know, but um, still interesting that that's on there. So let's just go ahead and open this up. And on the the, uh, the sides of the box, we just have advertisements for other products like Packed Worlds, uh, Alien Archive, Starfinder Accessories, and then the Core Rulebook. So here we have our bases for our, our pawns. So you just stand them in the, uh, the slots there, sort of in the middle of the base. Don't know how well they're going to show up, but there you go. And then we have our polyhedral dice, so just a basic black dice with white numbers, but simple to read and uh, great stuff for uh, for people that are just getting into the game for the first time. Uh, this also actually comes with some promo cards for Munchkin games, so Munchkin Starfinder or Pathfinder. So I guess this probably looks like one uh, for each, which is actually really cool. This is something that they didn't have to do, and I wasn't expecting it. Uh, I'll leave this sealed up. I'm not going to open it up, but uh, a really, really cool, just nice touch that they would include that uh, in there as well. And I'm actually going to just dump all of this stuff out to make it a lot easier uh, to get everything here. Oh. All right, so first thing we have here is like the, the quick reference. Um, you know, so if you have a group, you look at all this stuff, if you're just on your own, you look at this. On the back we have just the complete, again, list of everything they have. And this is actually a nice glossy uh, paper as well. Uh, so here we have our game aid, so the cards that uh, just have, again, what you can do on your turn. Uh, it's got resting information. 
and on the back it has some conditions. Uh, not the whole list, obviously, but the, some of the more common ones like flat-footed, frightened, hampered, helpless, impaired, off-kilter, staggered, or unconscious. And there's six of those, so it's a nice number to have. And uh, this is something I'd probably take with me even to my regular, uh, regular games. So uh, that's really, really cool there. And this might be a little bit out of order uh, from like the freshly sealed box, but everything's here. Uh, so this is our character sheet. And it's got the list of dice on the side, including how to read uh, the D4, which is nice. Uh, what they are, you got your ability modifiers, character information, then you have like your initiative, uh, defense, weapon stuff here as well. As long as what you're as well as what you're proficient in, which is a nice little feature to have. You can just check them off, which I think is actually really, really cool. I'm probably gonna photocopy these actually and just let players use these if they want. Um, and then you got like racial traits, class features, feats, skills here. On the back, we just have you know the dice again, equipment, character portrait, description, uh, adventure log, which is again sort of cool to have. Spells if you use them, including little symbols to let you know sort of what the spells do. So if this one, any spell that you have, the screen sort of flowery symbol targets allies, the skull targets enemies, and the the, the star uh, is utility. And just a little section for notes, which again, really, really cool stuff there. So here we have our player's, or the player's book, the Hero's Handbook. And the solo adventure is right at the beginning. So it tells you what dice you need and you sort of go from there. Um, it's sort of like, sort of, it looks like a uh, sort of pick your own uh, adventure kind of thing, uh, which is really, really cool. And then just has your information for, um, you know, creating your characters and the character uh, races, classes, the themes, uh, the abilities that they get uh, for the levels that are presented in here, which I think this goes up to third level, which again is really, really cool. And yeah, so we got that. Uh, one actually detail that I noticed that I really liked, if I can not skip past it here, is that the equipment, like the weapons and stuff, all have the picture of what the, the thing looks like right next to its description which is, again, really, really cool to have. So I, I like that. Um, I, I like this organization a slight bit better uh, than what we have in the books itself, but I understand why in the hardcover books that they, they do the way that they do. Uh, but in this one, they have a little bit more room to work with, I think, so uh, just cool stuff there. They got some ships and uh, the combat rules and all that stuff. So here we have our pre-made characters. There are six of these as well. So we have the Envoy, the Mystic, the Operative, the Mechanic, the Soldier, and then the Technomancer. So um, Envoy sort of like your skilled based character. Mystic is kind of your divine based character. Operative is sort of like a roguish type. Uh, the mechanic is, well, I mean, it's mechanic, that doesn't need a lot of elaboration there. Uh, now that it's the soldier, again, pretty straightforward. And the technomancer is sort of like your, your wizard type character. Uh, so, let's just look at the envoy right quick. Uh, each of these uh, things, sort of just a folded page. Uh, the front actually has um, just some points here that if you're, if you like to do this, so if you want to play the envoy, choose the envoy if you'd like to be a charismatic people person make friends and intimidate foes, inspire allies, or undermine your enemies. And then you have like, the, for the mystic, you know, help, heal and help your friends. Uh, if you like to do that, then this would be the best class. Uh, sling psychic bolts and telekinetic projectiles. Uh, use and detect magic. And communicate telepathically. So it gives that stuff there, which is kind of cool. On the back, it has a little bit of backstory on the character. And then on the inside, uh, we just have the character sheet itself, um, which is basically just the, the front page um, for this character because they don't have spells. Uh, but it's one, one of the cool things, like it has their feet descriptions, their skill descriptions, but the cool thing is that it just looks like it's filled in by hand, uh, whereas a lot of these starter sets use like, everything it looks nicely typed up and stuff. But I, I actually really like the fact that it all looks handwritten. It's just an aesthetic thing that for me I really, really like. Uh, so let's just also take a quick look at the Mystics since they have spells. And so they have their spells uh, written down on this side. 
as well as like the they have the boxes for the number of times that they could be used. So uh, sort of how they deal with that. But again, pretty cool to have these ready-made characters. Then we have our Dungeon Master's Guide, which has our adventure book. Uh, and then we have like the map here. So I'm not going to unfold the, the map fully just because um, it's kind of difficult to do with uh, the limited space that I have on this kind of smaller table uh, with all these other things. But this is basically what the map looks like. And uh, again, you know, the you know spoilers, I guess. Uh, I'll make sure to, to put that in the, the description of the video. Um, but yeah, so we got the adventure here. And, you know, just all the stuff that they would need, uh, a game master would need to create their own adventures. Uh, some suggestions on, like, environments, locations. It gives you Absalon Station. A little bit of information on the Pack World system, which is cool. Including this really great artwork that's on the inside and, like, back covers of all the Starfinder books. And that's just, again, awesome. Uh, beyond the Pact World, so it has, like, the Vast, the Islanti Star Empire, the Swarm. Uh, the Swarm isn't a location, but it's just, uh, like, organizations and threats. And it's got the religion here. Which, again, is really, really cool. Some monsters. So it's this, like, your alien archive. And, uh, just random encounter chart. Charts, which are really cool. And then we have, uh, Absalon Station, uh, there as well. Which again is just really, really nice that they do that. So here's the double-sided map, and this is the exact same material and size as a typical uh, flip mat is for like that you could purchase separately. One side is just a blank grid, and uh, the other has the uh, the adventure location for the game master's guide adventure. So really, really cool that they did that because that is you know again like just uh, you know fifteen to twenty dollars on its own. And then we have our pawns. So we got three sheets of pawns, including everything that you would need for uh, the adventure here. Just some cool stuff uh, in general. And we got our we got our robot dragon there again. And uh, this the the last sheet here has all of the uh, characters, the ready-made characters, and then just some uh, ones that you could use for if you make your own. So again, really really cool stuff there. And the last thing that we have is just a little advertisement for the Starfinder Society. Again, on really nice uh, glossy paper. So it tells you how to get there. And then we have our, uh, just what you can do sort of after that. So hardcover book, the, the core rule book, um, Pact Worlds, and uh, Alien Archive. So yeah, so that is the contents of the box itself. Uh, so what we're going to do is just sort of tidy everything up and I will uh, do my full review. So uh, let me just get this out of the way and I'll be right back. All right, so that was the contents of the box uh, itself. So we've gone through and sort of looked at uh, all of the items that were there. Uh, so I'm just gonna sort of push this um, to the back, tilt this down. And right now the thing I wanna sort of focus on is the uh, Hero's Handbook. Uh, more so than just about anything else right now. We'll sort of flip through this a little bit uh, while I sort of uh, talk about what this product is, uh, who it's targeting, and what to expect uh, if you pick this up and go to run it. Uh, number one, the first major thing about this is this is not um, the this is not the exact same sort of rule sets as what you get in the hardcover book. Uh, this product is designed to basically be a, uh, a simplified or uh, even, I guess you could say, a basic version of the Starfinder role-playing game. So there are certain uh, things that have been sort of taken out. Uh, many of the skills have been combined and uh, you know put into broader categories. Um, your ability scores are determined solely by either choosing the arrays that we have up here, so an 18, 14, three ten, or four tens, 16, 16, four tens, or three four tens and three tens, uh, or rolling them, rolling 46 and adding the three highest, um, and that's it. So once you get those numbers, um, they're not going to change. And again, that's just part of the more basic approach to the game. And uh, while that may be a little bit of a shock to some people, um, honestly, from just going back and reading things like uh, the Moldvay and uh, Menser versions of like basic Dungeons and Dragons. It was the same way. You know, races didn't actually modify your stats. They just had their own separate abilities, which is what we have here. Um, 
the races still give you like racial traits. So you, like androids, for example, still have like the flat effect that makes it difficult to read, um, to like to get a read on them in terms of like sensing their motive or trying to, you know, see if they're, um, try to see through like a deception or something like that. And they still get the penalty to like the basically the same kinds of skills. Uh, your humans still get uh, an extra extra skill, extra feet. <clears throat> um, your you know the the Yoski, the mouse creature, still gets its cheek pouches and all that stuff. So they still get the bulk of their abilities. Uh, it's just the ability score modifiers aren't there. Um, with the classes as well, um, hit points are the only thing you have to worry about. Um, you do get result points as well, but you don't have stamina and hit points anymore. Uh, they just increased essentially the number of hit points that you would get. And instead of having a short rest to regain all of your stamina, um, what they do is if you take a short rest and spend a resolve point, you get half of your hit point total back, half your hit point maximum back. And then if you do a long rest, you get half your maximum back again. So that's sort of, um, you know, you do one and then the other, and then there you go. So you have all of your hit points back, um, which again, you know, works in the context of something that's designed for uh, people who aren't already intimately familiar with the Starfinder game. Uh, this is called a beginner box. So again, it's something that's for people first getting into this kind of game, or even for people that are just getting into role-playing games for the very first time. And I think this actually does a pretty good job of that um, overall. Um, I'm, I'm actually really happy with the way that this works out. Uh, each of the classes that are present in here, uh, the six classes that we have, are uh, supported from levels one through four. So they all have up to fourth level that you can uh, that you can do with them. And then after that, it uh, kind of points you towards the core rulebook, which on more than one occasion is actually referred to as the advanced uh, rule set. Um, so it's just to me, it's just sort of another callback to sort of the, like a classic era in RPGs where you have a basic rule set that just gives you the first few levels, and then after that, it, it points you towards a you know the advanced version of the rules, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, the presentation overall, again, is really, really great. Uh, I especially love the fact that the vast majority of equipment has the visual aids to go along with the specific item. So you can see all of like the weapons, what they look like, all of the like the guns, the armor, and um, you know basically all of that stuff has the images to go with it, which in my opinion is just a really cool way of doing it. And I wouldn't be horribly opposed to them doing that in like future um, rule books actually either I think that would be pretty cool uh, to, to sort of see that going forward um, just makes it you know everything's just sort of like right there so you're not flipping through pages to try to find you know the pictures or the images or uh, things of that nature um, along with this being a <clears throat> basic game like I said some of the skills have been combined so instead of having things like um, sense motive or bluff or diplomacy uh, it's just all grouped into what's called interaction and you just make an interaction check for any of those skills and uh, it actually works uh, pretty well again for it being something that's meant to be a pick up and play and not have to spend you know six eight hours just reading over um, all the rules and trying to get everything straight that way so I think that works really well um, one other thing that is absent in this version of the rules would be ship-based combat. So there's no space battles um, in this version of the game. Um, but again, that's something that if you want to get that involved, it does point you towards the advanced um, or the core rulebook, which has more you know expanded rules, obviously. Um, so for what this is, I think it does, again, a really good job. And, you know, the fact that the space battle system is not in here is something that I'm okay with. I like the space battles. I think it's an interesting system. Um, I think there's room for improvement on it, honestly. But um, that said, it also is something that sometimes gets shoehorned into some of the adventures. And, and with this one, with this particular box set only having a, uh, a single uh, adventure, full adventure that it gives you, which really is only going to get you from first to second level, um, having like the space battle in there on top of everything else just wouldn't have made sense in the first place. And again, it just creates a more complicated um, set of rules. 
and would involve you know like more maps and things along those lines so it's something that it, it's an omission that honestly I understand and I'm totally okay with. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, what are my thoughts on this uh, beginner box? Uh, I think it's an awesome set. Uh, I really do. And I had always heard good things about Paizo's, um, you know, beginner boxes. Like they had the uh, the Pathfinder one that they did uh, quite a few years back now. And um, <clears throat> and I had heard people, you know, give that really high praise. And um, I feel like the Starfinder beginner box uh, really lives up to that level of quality and it's something that um, I was really looking forward to this uh, from the moment it was announced like back I think before Christmas even uh, is when it was first announced and I just I was really anticipating getting it and um, I'm not disappointed at all and I'm really happy to have this and it's something that I could see me wanting to to run actually I know that like Halcon uh, 2019 is just a few months away. Uh, I already submitted my volunteer application, and I feel like the uh, the adventure in the start in the beginner box is something that I will probably submit uh, to run at the event, and um, you know, let people know if they if they play if they join in the game. This is where the adventure came from, uh, and um, you know, this like the set is if you're interested in Starfinder then this is a great way to get your, your foot in the door sort of thing. Uh, I also really like the fact that the um, the adventure <clears throat> doesn't encompass the entirety of the level progression inv involved in this product. So instead of having an adventure that takes your characters from first to fourth level and then, you know, basically after that you have to buy like the core rules if you want to keep going, um, this adventure essentially gets you from first to second level and then from that point um, it really, you know, it gives you advice on creating your own adventures, it gives you some ideas that you can use for future adventures, but it really supports um, Game Master creativity instead of just following the adventure and then, okay, well now that you've done that, um, it's time to just move on to the other rule set. It's, you've run your first adventure, um, your characters still, you know, have some progression they can do uh, within the confines of this set. So here's some ideas and things that you can do. It gives you a dungeon map that you can use. You can fill out uh, the details in uh, yourself, which again is something that that I don't think a lot of starter sets necessarily do. And not that I would overly expect them to, but the fact that this one gives game masters the ability to start telling their own stories um, and still use this box and still have the characters progress and level up um, through the Game Master's own stories uh, is something I find just kind of refreshing. Uh, I also think that's a point in its favor that you can either use the ready-made characters or create your own, whereas a lot of other like starter sets will have one or the other. Um, I have a few ones that have just pre-made characters and I have one that um, you know you get to create your character as you go um, uh, go through like the, the 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 player's book, and you create your character that way. But there's no pre-made ones, so you have to go through the process of creating the character. Whereas this one uh, gives you some customization options as well as the ability to just sort of pick up and play. Uh, speaking of which, the solo adventure as well is a really really nice touch and something that I was definitely not expecting. And um, I'm actually looking forward to giving that a go. And I think what I'm actually going to do is um, run through the solo adventure uh, maybe on camera and uh, do that like in a week or, or two weeks or let the box set be out for a little bit before um, doing that run through because it would be like a spoiler to uh, that type of, uh, to that particular adventure. Although I think there's going to be a few different uh, branching paths and, and character choices that you can make. Uh, overall, this is a really, really solid product. Um, if you're interested or sort of intrigued by the idea of the Starfinder role-playing game, but don't want to put down the money to get the core rulebook, um, then I think this is a great way for you to get um, sort of acclimated to um, the Starfinder rule set and the Starfinder setting. There is information on um, the Pact World system, as well as you know some things like the Islanti Star Empire has a little bit of information on the Vesk um, Empire as well, uh, and um, things you know talks about the Gap and some of like the historical periods. So just there's a lot of great information in here, and if you're someone who 
you know, wants to get into Starfinder, but you like the idea of creating your own adventures, then you can do that with this as well. And uh, it, does, it, it supports that really, really well. Um, if you're someone who's heard about role-playing games and wants to get into a role-playing game, and you're looking for something that's going to be sort of easy to pick up and learn and get into, um, right now I think this is one of the better options that are out there. Um, so again, if you're sort of new to role-playing games and you want to get into to, to running them or things like that, uh, I think this is a really, really good purchase. Um, for the amount of stuff that's in here, um, so again, we'll just go back to that table of contents. So what we have inside of this set, uh, it does have a $40 US uh, retail price, but for that you're getting two 96-page book booklets, um, which is, you know, close to 200 pages uh, total, which for forty dollars, isn't really that far off of what you're paying for a lot of um, like the hardcover books that you're getting for some of the other role-playing games right now. So that's again pretty decent. Uh, and ninety-six for uh, each of those pages or each of those books is a pretty hefty um, page count for, especially for a starter set. You're getting a set of dice, um, which is great as well. Uh, you're also getting, you know, the the pawn sets. Um, so you're getting like 80 of these sort of uh, stand-up miniatures that you can use, along with several bases to support them. Uh, you've got ready-made characters, so you can just pick it up and basically start running it almost immediately. Or if you have a group that's a little bit more experienced and you want to go through the character creation process, then that's available to you as well. Uh, the player aid cards for the quick reference rule are again pretty cool as well. Uh, it is for the more simplified version of the game, uh, but just having what actions you can take in a round and having descriptions on some of the more uh, common status effects or conditions is um, something that I think would be useful beyond the context of just this box set. And the flip mat is, again, really high quality. Uh, it's got the full adventure map that you can use for the uh, adventure that's included, as well as a completely blank grid that you can use to create your own uh, dungeons and encounters. And those maps tend to have like a $15 to $20 value on their own. So from that perspective, that's you know pays for nearly half of the box just getting that. And it's, again, the same... Uh, quality that you would get for the regular retail products instead of it just being like a paper map a thin paper map um, It's like the thick cardstock that you can use with like the dry erase wet erase markers and it's really really good inclusion So um, I recommend this product very very highly um, I, I can't really say enough good things about it. It's a nice simple way to get into the Starfinder game It gives you an idea of what the system is like and if you like it, then you can move on to the more advanced version of the rules. Um, but again, for the uh, for the price, for what's included, I think that this is a very, very solid purchase. Uh, so anyway, let me know in the comments below uh, if any of you have picked this up as well. Um, or if you're planning on it, let, let me know what you think of like the included contents. Oh, and the... The fact that they have just the promo cards for the uh, Munchkin games is a nice little bonus as well, something that they certainly didn't have to do. So I guess I should, should mention that in there as well, because uh, that's just a cool little extra that they threw in there. Uh, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoy the beginner box uh, if you pick it up. Uh, until next time, take care.